In previous lessons, we saw that the standard free energy change for a reaction is an indicator of the spontaneity of a reaction. Also in previous lessons, we saw that the equilibrium constant K indicates how far a reaction goes towards products, which is also a measure of the spontaneity of a reaction. Therefore, there should be a relationship between the standard free energy change for a reaction and the equilibrium constant K. In general, as the value of the equilibrium constant increases, the free energy change for the reaction becomes more negative. When the reaction quotient Q is equal to K, the free energy change for a reaction is zero. So using an equation we learned in the previous video, the free energy change for a reaction is equal to the standard free energy change for a reaction plus RT ln Q. When we substitute in the value of zero for the free energy change for the reaction and K for Q, we have zero equals the standard free energy change for a reaction plus RT ln K. Rearranging this equation, we get a relationship between the standard free energy change for the reaction and the equilibrium constant K. The standard free energy change for a reaction is equal to minus RT ln K. When K is less than one, the reactants are favored in the equilibrium. And at the same time, the standard free energy change for the reaction is positive, which indicates a non-spontaneous process. When the equilibrium constant has a value greater than one, that indicates that the products are favored, and at the same time, the standard free energy change for the reaction is negative, indicating a spontaneous reaction. When the equilibrium constant has a value of one, the standard free energy change for the reaction is zero, which indicates that the system is at equilibrium under standard conditions. Let's see how we could use this relationship between the standard free energy change and the equilibrium constant. In this problem, we're asked to use standard free energy of formation values of compounds to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for this system at 298 Kelvin. The equation given to us is that N2O4 gas is in equilibrium with two moles of NO2 gas. We're also given the standard free energy of formation values for the N2O4, which is 99.8 kilojoules per mole, and NO2, which is 51.3 kilojoules per mole. To begin this problem, we recognize that since we're given the standard free energy of formation values, we can find the standard free energy change for the reaction, and from there, we can calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. We'll begin by calculating the standard free energy change for the reaction. So the standard free energy change for the reaction is equal to the sum of the moles multiplied by the standard free energy of formation values for the products minus the sum of the moles multiplied by the standard free energy of formation values for the reactants. When we plug in the values from the table, we get two moles of NO2 multiplied by 51.3 kilojoules per mole for the products minus one mole of N2O4 multiplied by 92.8 kilojoules per mole for the reactants. This gives us 102.6 kilojoules for the products minus 99.8 kilojoules for the reactants, or the standard free energy change for this reaction is 2.8 kilojoules. Next, we can use this value for the standard free energy change for the reaction to solve for the value of the equilibrium constant K. We'll begin with the equation delta G zero reaction equals minus RT ln K. We'll rearrange the variables to isolate K by dividing minus RT by both sides. This gives us delta G zero reaction divided by minus RT equals the natural log of K. We'll now plug in the values after converting so that all of the energy units are in kilojoules. So we have 2.8 kilojoules per mole for the free energy change for the reaction, negative 8.314 times 10 to the negative third kilojoules per mole Kelvin for the value of R, and 298 Kelvin for T. When we enter this in the calculator, we get negative 1.13 is equal to the natural log of K. Now we're not done yet. 
This value is the natural log of k, where the problem asked us for the value of the equilibrium constant k. We'll take the inverse function so that k is equal to e to the minus 1.13 power, where the equilibrium constant is equal to 0 0.32. We can now do a quick check to see if our answers agree. We have a k that has a value of less than 1, and we have a standard free energy change for the reaction that is positive, and that agrees with what we learned in the previous slide. After watching this video, you should be able to describe the relationship between the standard free energy change for a reaction and the equilibrium constant for the reaction. You should also be able to use the standard free energy change for a reaction to find the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction, or you can use the value of the equilibrium constant for a reaction to find the value of the standard free energy change for this reaction.